The Cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC. Redefine. VCE. Innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. Welcome back everybody, this is Dave Vellante with Steve Keniston and we're here live at EMC World 2014. This is the Data Protection and Availability Spotlight. We've been double clicking uh, this afternoon on Data Protection as a Service, uh, Backup, talking a little bit about IT transformation and, and how IT services and data protection as a service fits into that. Tom McEwen is here, he's the Vice President IT Enterprise Architecture at Independent Bank. Tom, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So tell us about the the, the bank, what's, uh, what's, the, what's the focus of the bank? Uh, give us a sort of, paint a sure. picture for us. Independent Bank, it's a Michigan only community bank. Have uh, 72 branches, we're a fully uh, serviced bank. Uh, publicly traded, about 2.3 billion in assets. Been in business since 1864. Roughly 912 employees and uh, a couple of data centers. And um, around that, we're a EMC, longtime EMC customer. Steady Midwest company, you know, yep. you to get, you know, continue to grow. So talk about some of the uh, challenges in your business, the drivers in your business. What's the business telling you as the IT guy? What sure. do they want from you? Well, the financial vertical is going more electronic, and as a community bank, mobile adoption has been a, a big deal to us. Um, servicing our customers, our customers being able to service themselves, uh, seen a lot of growth in the paperless environment, trying to improve business processes to streamline things to make it easier and quicker for our customers to transact with the business. So not only from a transaction standpoint, but I, I've, I've kind of experienced this too, right? One, you've got the ability to, so I travel a lot for business, right? To be able to use my bank, seven by 24, 365, any place in the world. Correct. Two, do things like, you know, I know, I got to imagine when, when the CEO of the bank saw the first time you could take a picture of your check and deposit, he said, I need to have that too, right? Now you've got all this data being kept online for longer periods of time. How's that, how's that impacting what you got to do from a protection standpoint? Well, that's exactly a good point, is data availability 24-7 internally and externally, and how we're leveraging that is um, we, we did a customer reference a while back and went through a transformation ourselves in our data centers um, to be an active, active data center. So we're leveraging with EMC VPlex, RecoverPoint, and uh, Atmos in our virtual environment. So tier one applications are on VPlex, tier two applications are on RecoverPoint. So transforming from a four hour RPO, uh, 15 minute RTO, to basically going into a zero downtime environment for the bank and our customers. Wow, that's a pretty tight downtime. So what's, your, what's the main application that you got to keep, make sure you keep running? Like what's the high priority? Really the high priority is the files that are associated with our customer facing points. So that could be check imaging, the ability to transact with checks coming into the bank, and mortgage processing, all of those critical business applications that have data associated with them truly are oh, what's behind the scenes. So that, that cuts across both file and block type of infrastructure. What's what's the main product or technology using to make sure you're protecting that and, and uh, meeting those RPOs and RTOs? Uh, VPlex is the primary product. Um, behind that is going to be uh, Atmost. Um, Atmost is sitting behind for the archive data so it's object oriented, we have multiple Atmos in our environment. So for the stale content that the customers may need to go and reference such as check images, they're going to come in and hit Atmos for that zero to 90 day uh, file data, that's going to be on the VPlex. Oh, so what about Viper? Are you, are you, are you, do you see something like Viper and say, okay, that's going to fit into my long term strategy, I got the Atmos APIs, I can, I can leverage that. What are, you, what are your thoughts on, on Viper? Is it Certainly, so Viper has a very unique play into that transforming and redefining IT, so that software defined data center. I see that as a great fit for being able to quickly provision and automate storage processes and improve IT service delivery to the business model. It takes away a lot of effort in um, the process of bas basically going in and under the hood and the work hours involved around 
uh, defining storage and mapping storage to business applications. So the reason I ask is that you, you mentioned sort of IT as a service, as a, yes. as a business model, and a lot of the, the, the customers that we talk to in the Wikibon community are trying to get there, and they say the hardest part is just understanding the business requirement, aligning with that business requirement and delivering on it. Um, so where are you at in terms of that transformation, delivering IT as a service generally, and specifically what I'll call data protection as a service? Sure, data protection as a service, I mean, we've pretty much kind of nailed it from an RPO, RTO, where the business requires the workload. Where I see the, um, the fit where it's being a little bit more of a challenge is on the new business requests coming into uh, for new applications, new platforms, or changes to that data set. That's a little bit more unique where you're going to see some challenges around trying to redefine those, um, those key points. Okay, so, but am I to understand that you're, so you said four, you had a four hour R R RPO and a 15 minute RTO, and you've yeah. essentially gone down to a, a zero data loss environment yes. and a near instantaneous recovery. Correct. Uh, and you apply that to all applications? Or? Apply that to all critical business applications. Okay. So th that is correct. So you're going to have a second layer, which is tier two applications, which the business has basically defined that those are not critical, not priority, they're not customer facing, they're not going to drive a business process that absolutely has to be there in that four hour window. Um, those can shift from that four to eight hour time frame and that's where Recover Point fits very nicely for that. That way I'm not adding overhead on VPlex for application platforms that don't need to be there. So you're aligning the, the expense to the business with correct. the requirement to the business. That is yeah, correct. So, so you had talked just a little bit before about your Avamar implementation from a protection standpoint. Can you tell us a little bit more about where that fits in your overall scheme? Yeah, that's a great question. So with being heavily virtualized, almost 100%, Avamar was a nice fit with VPlex when we were, we were an early adopter of it. Therefore, the recover point splitter for VPlex was only in the secondary site for going off to basically a third site. We didn't have a third site in our portfolio, and so in order to get that crash consistent backup um, capability, Avamar layers that in there uniquely, so it has the ability to snapshot the virtual data to give you that crash consistent protection. So that was kind of a layered approach to cover ourselves to make sure that if there was that instance, we would have crash consistent availability of all the data within the same time frames. And what process do you guys go through to help you help you understand? I know you said your customer facing apps are tier one. Anything else fall into that tier one? Some of the practitioners, that, you know, as Dave mentioned, the Wikibon folks that, that listen, they, they, it's helpful for them for them to get an understanding of what's tier one, what's tier two, what's some of the decision making process I use to, to have something slate in there from, from, a, from a protection standpoint. Um, a lot of it is surveying the businesses in terms of what application platforms that internally that they're leveraging to do their daily jobs. And for them to tell IT, specifically, if they were without this application in these time frames, could they still do their and continue business without suffering? And so you're going to have basically all the back-end applications, uh, the teller platforms, uh, the lending platforms, Harlan, uh, Unify from Fiserv, on base from Wausau, those are critical business facing applications internally that um, they've defined that need to be there. When you talk to your peers, and thinking back when you, you know, had you know, pri previous to your existing environment, what keeps you and your peers up at night when you're thinking about data protection? The unknown, what, uh, what is going to happen? Is a service provider going to cause an outage? Okay. And, and that, that goes into that IT as a service, and so where we're at is we're looking to move more towards um, that software-defined data center to reduce the impact points. So I'm looking for specifics on, on how, EMC, give me some proof points. How did EMC help resolve those problems, and, and can you talk about any specific metrics or business outcomes that occurred as a result? Well, there's, there's two points to that question. The first part is how did EMC help Basically, we looked at different service providers and you know, EMC isn't just a product company, they're a solutions provider. When I looked at their tight integration with VMware and other partners and players, they brought a whole solution stack to the table. So um, previously we had NetApp in play for a VDI environment. We ended up removing that because it didn't fit well within our environment for having one solution to go with, one vendor, so as I mentioned, VPlex, Recover Point, Avamar, Atmos, 
source one for archival recovery, I have one-stop shopping to go to with one provider that gives me that benefit. Um, the business critical points that map into that um, comes around defining key metrics in terms of what is critical to the business for uptime and recovery to map to that solution set. Okay, so the outcome was you're able to meet those business requirements exactly. and deliver that service. If you had to do it over again, what would you do differently? If I had to do over again, I'd do something a little bit differently is when I put in VPlex with VMware in a metro cluster environment, it was a little bit bleeding edge at the point. Um, I probably would have vetted it out a little bit uh, further. Uh, it took a little bit about six months of growing pain to get the solutions that fully mapped out and functional to where it needed to be truly that zero downtime environment. And I wish I would have done a little bit more on the business side in terms of um, validating some of the business processes. We had a few of them slip through the cracks that ended up getting vetted out in the process. So those were uh, blind spots or white space that you had to fill in. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, okay, last question is, if thinking about uh, the next 12 to, let's say, 18 months, what are the big initiatives that you're, you're focused on? Infrastructure as a service, those IT as a service aspects, trying to align to where I'm doing more with less. That could be software-defined data center, or it could be partners providing services that augment. So, um, trying to reduce big CapEx expenditures and going with more of a OpEx fixed cost. How will that affect your data protection environment specifically? It shouldn't impact the data protection environment. That's where those same requirements got to map over. And looking at partner assessments, it's very hard. And when you're looking at cloud and service partners that say they have infrastructure as a service, there's not one size that truly fits all, nor do they all cover the gamut. Tom, great having you on theCUBE. We always love the, the practitioner's perspective. You know, love talking to, to the guys who are actually doing it. Thanks very much. Yeah, thank you, I appreciate you. it. All right, thank keep you. it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. Right after that, right after this, we're live from Las Vegas, EMC World 2014. This is theCUBE.